everybody to the uh, Setara University Express webinar series. Uh, my name is Bernd Wendt and uh, I'm the, uh, the head of the Setara Software Support Group. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Anna for this great opportunity to show you some of the tips and tricks of, of Phoenix that people typically call Setara support for and we would provide this information. Also, uh, uh, this is kind of reminding me of the good old PML school webinars that some of you may uh, know about that we ran a couple of years ago. But anyway, uh, what I want to show today is how to rebuild a model from a literature reference. Uh, in general, uh, this should be simple and straightforward, and you can use the Phoenix model object with its built-in functions or the graphical model builder. Um, but in today's webinar, we want to add another level of complexity, and that is adding between subject variabilities, or in other words, uh, rebuilding a population PK model. Before we start um, the typical logistics of the series, uh, all attendees are muted and you are encouraged to use the Q&A panel, panel to raise your questions or when you have comments. We will come back to those at the end of the webinar. So I'll move on. Um, in a nutshell, uh, this is what we want to achieve today. You see on the left-hand side uh, a plot with PK profiles from IV and subcutaneous administration. This is just a copy and paste from the journal art article. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, you see the results uh, from our model building exercise. The first impression is that the overall curve of the profiles is satisfactorily reproduced. But what you can also see uh, uh, that there's quite a bit of variability regarding CMAX or TMAX on the right-hand side with the individual profiles. So there's something that our simulation didn't capture. We can discuss these uh, details in, when, we, when we go into simulation in Phoenix. Go on. So uh, here's our agenda for today's webinar. Uh, I will start by presenting the literature reference. Then I will describe the principal steps that are required to rebuild the model. This is followed by a short software demonstration where I go through those same steps using Phoenix. Uh, and then uh, I will give a short summary and we will have a Q&A session. Oops. So uh, here's the artic article uh, that we are going to, uh, going to use for rebuilding a model. Uh, it would need to be an open article that everybody can access. So this article you can easily find in the internet and download as PDF. For, and uh, as, as some of you may know, I'm coming from an oncology lab, so you may not be surprised that I chose an article about a monoclonal antibody trastuzumab. But uh, uh, this is an interesting article. There are two formulations presented, the standard uh, uh, treatment of care IV administration and a new subcutaneous formulation. And uh, this article not only talks about the population PK, this is just the start, of the uh, whole uh, story, but also how the model could be used to find a promising dosing schedule for the new formulation. And uh, this, uh, over the next few slides, I'm going to explain in detail uh, the individual steps when rebuilding a model. We first need to build the structural model from the text. So we browse the text to find the right keywords to build our model, and then we will extract uh, the uh, parameter estimates from the tables in the article. These are called fixed effects or theta values in pop modeling. And then we extract the random effects. These are the actual between subject variabilities that make up the population model. But here we cannot take the values as they are reported. We need to convert them before entering this into Phoenix. Uh, to finish our model, we need to extract the residual error or sigma from the article, and here we can place the value directly in, into Phoenix. Um, once the model is created, we are going to set up and run stochastic simulations. 
Uh, stochastic simulation means that uh, you uh, that a sample is drawn from the distribution of the random effects from the population to create a profile from a typical subject and predict uh, that is the corresponding PK profile. But for a simulation, I mean, more than one sample is, needs to be drawn to cover the population space. So let's move on. Um, so let's start building the model. On the left-hand side, you see the text from the article that describes the structural model. Um, and I'm just highlighting, let me go look for the pointer, and I'm just highlighting uh, the uh, keywords in the text and point to the corresponding uh, feature on the, on the uh, model depiction. So this starts with um, the uh, uh, structural model. It's a two-compartment structural model, and you see here you have, we have the central and the peripheral uh, compartment here. Then we have um, a first-order process uh, with absorption that is here displayed with an absorption compartment and a, 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 a flow, a one, a one directional flow with a rate constant Ka. And then we have a, a dual linear and nonlinear elimination processes. These are these two uh, pathways. So the, the first one is a linear one uh, uh, defined with a clearance parameter, and the other one is the one with, with the Michael Ellis Metten equation where you have the parameters Vmax and the Michael Ellis Metten constant. And uh, that's, that's our structural model. Let me go to the next slide. Uh, there, there was also some text about uh, um, co adding covariate. But here, first of all, uh, we need to refine these structural parameters that build up the structural model. So here are all the uh, structural parameters listed. Uh, and uh, there's a column here with random effects, there are checkboxes for random effects. Uh, on the, uh, in the text, you will see indications that only four random effects are um, d defined, and these are for uh, central volume clearance, absorption rate constant, and bioavailability F1. So you need to uncheck those boxes first. But then you are adding covariates. And here you have two boxes down, down at the bottom. You can just add from unused. This is, these are columns available in your input data set. And I picked those and found the body weight and root information. And with the text, you see uh, the body weight should be uh, used as a covariate for clear, clearance and central volume. So what you need to do is you need to check those. You need to just click those boxes to say yes and yes. And you can also add, add as values to center these, these body weights by their median value. This uh, number is taken from the article text. And then you see uh, here the, the formulas that make up the covariate relationship. That, uh, uh, that corresponds to the text here, the exponents of the power function squared, uh, uh, the covariate parameter relationships. This is what we see here. And uh, as a next step, we need to uh, go to the parameters covariate type uh, sub-tab in order to uh, define the root information as a category covariate. And here you can enumerate the information, the textual information that IV is, is, is assigned a value of zero and subcutaneous administration is uh, assigned a value of one. Let's see this, and let me go this on. Next slide. So, um, in the next slide, slide, we are switching uh, from the textual description to the tabular one. This is a table from the article. And here are all the parameter estimates. And this is the easiest part because you can take exactly those values and enter them ma manually uh, into this uh, fixed effects tabs under the parameters tab. And you see it's really just uh, uh, typing in the values from the table. And uh, set now next next step is to add actually the random effects. In the same table, you will also find the between subject variabilities. But you see these are expressed here as CV percent uh, values, and 
as such, the, 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 um, what, what Phoenix assumes is the variance. So you need to convert them. And uh, this you can do either through an Excel sheet like I did here, or you can use a pocket calculator or whatever. So what you need to do is you take uh, the values, the CV percent, divide by 100, and take the square. And then you come up with those values. And once you have those values, you just simply enter those into the fields here under parameters, random effect, into the specific um, boxes here. It's a diagonal matrix, so you just need to enter those four, four values. And uh, how this is being defined, you can uh, just read through the text. But this is the representative uh, implementation in Phoenix. So next step is. Yeah, the last uh, value that you need to add uh, uh, from, from the article into Phoenix is the residual error uh, 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 value. Uh, here, it's, we are, you, they have applied a multiplicative error. And you just take this 0.2.6 value and put it into you know, the structure uh, part of the um, uh, Phoenix model object and make sure you switch to multiplicative residual error and put the value of 0.26 into this field and that, that will do it. So this is a whole model um, uh, defined or translated into Phoenix. It should, this, I mean, is for me is a very simple and straightforward process. Let's go on. Uh, this is something, you know, uh, what we typically did in, uh, during the PML school webinars. We looked at the model because the PML code, right? This is a textual form, a textual rep representation of the same model that you see here um, in, the, in, in this picture. And it, it should just, uh, you know, tell you, I mean, this is really highly structured and clean text. So see, there are certain section in it, like the, the, uh, the structural model here with the differential equations of the first and the second compartment, the absorption compartment, the two dose points that we use. Here's um, the st statements for the residual error model. And here are all the definitions of the structural parameters in its really mathematical form. You see also here the covert relationships defined with the exponents here of the power function. And uh, then you see some input from covariates that we need, the so body weight and the root. And on the bottom, just the initial estimates, which are actually the final estimates, because we are simulating these, these values will be used for the calculations. Okay, so now we are at the step where we want to run, set up a stochastic simulation. And what do we need as input? Uh, the first table here on the top shows what you need. You need, first of all, an ID column because it's a population model. And uh, we will simulate a dose that is given at time equal zero. Uh, next, we need to distinguish two routes of administration, IV and SC. That's, we are, that's why we have two records here. And the next two columns are the dose amounts uh, for each uh, route, A1 for the IV route and AA for the extravascular route. And then we also have the body weight. Actually, what you can see here, the, um, the dose amounts are scaled by body weight. So the normalized dose amount is 408 divided by 68, the body weight. So here we have six mix per kick. Um, we have to um, provide uh, a single, I mean, the, the, the body weight is part of the model, but in this case, because we really want to keep it simple, we just used a single value and just a median value of the uh, population. We, the, the article does not describe any demographic data, so we, we just um, make it as simple as possible. But then, um, so when we uh, need to activate a reset function here because we are simulating one uh, 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 dose uh, amount after the other, so we need to make sure that the differential equations are setting uh, set back to zero and when you have these two uh, separating dosing events. Uh, perhaps I shall mention that this simulation is only partially here. We, we set uh, the simulation up here with six replicates. Um, is only partially reflecting um, the study data presented in the article. The original study included 24 healthy male volunteers plus 42 women with HER2 positive early breast cancer. So what we simulate here is only um, 
12 out of the 24 healthy male volunteers with a you know, fixed body weight of 68. So the, you please need, you need to take this into account when we look at the, the results. So here in, at the bottom, you see where, uh, how we can set up a simulation. This is under run options. We just switch on simulations. We uh, ask for a number of replicates of six. We put in, uh, we just ask for a specific uh, simulation table as output, where we put in some time values. It's the same that uh, is, is used in, in, uh, in the article. And we want to uh, get values for the root, for the body weight, and for the predicted concentration. One uh, thing we need to do is here, we need um, sort input, this is required. This is typically checked on, so every all the records is, are sorted by increasing time values. But in this case, since we want to reuse the reset function, we need to uncheck this box. And I'll come to this in this next uh, slide. This is an input option. You want to reset the, the differential uh, equation, so you need to activate this checkbox. And this is a, a value that it's looking for in your input data set. So with that, uh, we, can, we are ready for the demo. Let me share my screen. Um, Anna, can you see my screen? Hi, Bern. Yes, you're, we are able to see your Phoenix. OK, thanks. Let me move this out of the way. So this is my um, Phoenix project file. Uh, as a data, uh, that's what I showed you in the slide. This is my input data for the simulation. Exactly the same. Uh, and then what we need to do is we just need to send this data set to a Phoenix model object. Right? And I just put it into the workflow. And this is the typical default values. And we are just using here in the bottom panel the, the built in function for the first settings. We want to set this absorption to extravascular, the number of compartments to two. We don't want to use a closed form. We just use, uh, you want to see the full differential equations, OK? And as I said, the residual error, we can already set this here to multiplicative. And I rem if I remember correctly, the value for this was open to standard deviation was 0.226. So that's what we set here. Now, the next thing we need to do is we actually need to add it as a graphical, because there are some things we need to switch on in the graphical mode. So edit the model as graphical, and here's our graphical model. Right, and now you can pick, for example, the absorption compartments, and as you will find in the text, they have defined by availability. F1, if you uh, want to get a parameter calculated, you need to insert it here as well. So I just insert parameter F1 into this. Say, okay, this is my F1. Then uh, we need to um, go into the central compartment. Uh, the article talks with, uh, about the, central com the volume of the central compartment as V2, so we need to ch change it here. And since we have V2 here, we need to change this to V3 just to make it correct. And also the uh, peripheral uh, clearance is called Q, so let's call it Q here as well. Um, we have an extravascular um, absorption, but we also have an IV absorption, and that's what we are going back to the central compartment and set just in a, in another dose point here, and that will be our IV dose point. So these are the dose points that set, and now the next thing we need to do is we need to um, create another elimination route, right? So we take a elimination compartment and put a flow in here between central and uh, elimination compartment, and we call this uh, is not clearance, it's saturating. And we just need to give these proper names, Vm for Vmax and Km for the michaelis menten constant. And that's already everything uh, what we need. Um, next thing is we look. At, we are refining our structural model under the parameters tab. You know, here we have all the uh, definitions of uh, the um, structural parameters, and as I said, I mean there are not there are only four random effects uh, defined in this model. So I need to uncheck those 
other, those other four. So we only have uh, these available. And the next thing is we are adding covariates from the input, and we had uh, columns for root and uh, body weight, so we take those and add this. So you see them here. Now we can enter a, a value for centering, 68 kilograms. We can click here on yes, so the, these are uh, added to the formulas in, uh, in a power form. Um, the next thing is to define root as categorical variable. Okay, and we just want to enumerate the text IV is zero and SC is one. Okay, let's do this. Okay, that's, that's this. So the next thing is uh, we would actually need to enter uh, the fixed effects from from the article. Okay, let me do this. This is a little, little bit boring, but I mean, this really shows you what you need to do, right? This, I'm just taking the value direct, the, the values directly from the article. Let me just uh, 1.71. Uh, U is uh, 0.24. F1 is 0.87. VM was uh, 3.49, it's KM is 6.12, and 0.48 and 0.591. So these are the values directed from the table, and here are the random effects. Again, uh, after the conversion from CV percent into uh, variance, uh, these values look like 0 0.05 or 0 0.05 for add-on clearance. Then uh, for AKA, it's 0 0.029. The add for V2 is 0 0.045. And for F1, it's 0.15. Okay, that's it. Now we can check maybe the main mappings. Okay, everything's there. We have an ID, we have A1, we have AA, time. We don't need a CEOPS because we're running a simulation and we have the root information. So let's go to the run options. And here, as I said, uh, this sort input box, this is needed for um, uh, reset. We need to uncheck this, go to input options, and activate reset. And this is also shown here in the main mapping that reset is mapped automatically. So now we can set up our simulation. We go to simulation. We are asking for six replicates, and we want to add a similar the uh, simulation table with times, I just type them in. It's 12, 24, 36, 48. And as variables, as information, I would like the root information, body weight information, and the predicted concentration C. That's it. So we can actually start the yeah, we need to check the warnings box, but this is only warnings, so we can run the simulation. This will just take a few seconds. Uh, there's no fit to be done, so should proceed quickly, and here we are. So this is the result. We have a simulation table, and here's information, the replicate ID, the time, root information, body weight, and the concentrations. Predict the concentrate, concentration. Let's plot this just to give it an overview of what we've generated. So we want to see we want to see group by replicate and route, then time on x and c on y. Let me just go here and just do the don't show markers and maybe each group each color by root and execute the plot. 
And then you see this kind of graph. I mean, this is what you, uh, what you, what I showed on one of the slides. It looks similar. The type of, you know, the curves look similar, and also the concentration ranges are similar to what you see in the article. But uh, you typically don't use uh, just six replicates to um, uh, to simulate um, from a population model. What you want to see is. Uh, uh, you know, your whole data set, the observations of your data sets, and uh, um, then the predicted concentration from maybe 500 or 1,000 profiles, just to cover the um, population space properly, the model space. And we can do that also quickly with a visual predictive check. I'll show you quickly. Uh, there should be time to do that should be quick, so let me see. We send our simulation table just for some a few data transformation steps. Let's do this. And uh, what we need to do is we need to add to the simulation table a reset column, that like what we had before. And that is if, um, if the time equals zero, then it should set a one, otherwise a zero to, in order to set the time. We need dosing information. So we need to say uh, a1, uh, if, if the root equals zero, then uh, we say it's 408, right? And if, if, if sorry, no, if root equals not zero, if time equals zero, then it's 408, 408. Otherwise, it's nothing nothing, and so forth. That just takes this as the same for the other road at custom, and uh, call it AA. And we do this, and we just change root 0 to root 1 and run it. And here you now have every all information root, body weight, concentration reset, and the dose amounts. And this uh, we can actually use this model and copy it, paste it back to the workflow, and we call this maybe VPC, right? As input, we need the data wizard object. And I run options, we just change to predictive check. Maybe we ask for 500 replicates. And under COPS, we also want to win this case maybe in uh, using the same time points as centers. And we will stratify by root. Also, we want to see the quantiles around this. Let me show you this. As it should take a little longer. I mean, simulation typically don't take that long. I am there. No, not yet. Just a few seconds. Now it's completed. And here you have. Oops. Oh yeah. There's one thing I have uh, forgotten to. You know, if you want to compare observations with uh, predictions, you need to map your observations. Okay, I didn't do that, so I do it here. Let's do it here and, okay, takes a little while. It's completed now. And here you have now the VPC. And if you compare this, with the, uh, with the one in the literature, you see it's fairly similar also for the other administration, for the SC administration, it looks similar. So I mean, they have used uh, normalized concentrations. This was a little bit uh, too long for this um, uh, brief exercise to, to do. So let me conclude the presentation with just a summary. So um, here we, what we did today was set up a two-compartmental model from the literature with first-order absorption, IV, and subcutaneous administration, and with a linear as well as nonlinear elimination. We also had uh, body weight uh, as covariate relationship on volume and clearance, 
And we did run a stochastic count simulation once with a simple simulation, and also the VPC shows a similar profile with the one in the article. So I guess with that, I'm done. Uh, so we can move, I guess, to the Q&A. Anna, is there any, are there any questions? Yes, we actually have uh, many great questions, and uh, what we will do is we will create a Q&A document with the recording to respond to all your questions. But for today, maybe I will ask one question that I've seen several times. And uh, folks are interested in understanding better the reset and sort, and uh, why are you using those in, in your model setup? Yes. Um, so what what you do in in the simulation is you're giving a dose amount, starting by time equals zero, and then uh, you know the 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 the, 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 the engine will integrate uh, the concentrations over time. This is, is it the equations over time and to come up with the concentrations. But once uh, you know the um, the, the time points are over, like after 48 hours, the different equations are not zero. But, but when you go to the next subject, it's the same subject, it's ID1, right? Because we're only using one ID. You know, it, 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 it needs to have, to, it needs to reset its different equations to zero because it starts really at zero because the patients didn't, there was a washout period between IV and subcutaneous administration in the study. And we need to do the same here. We need to wash out the compartments to clean up all the all the remaining drug, and that's why you uh, do this um, this reset. And uh, the sort input is just a default um, op, uh, setting in Phoenix that it uh, re uh, sorts all the uh, in, uh, all the, tr tr the records into increasing time values. If, if there's no sorting, I mean, it will just assume, you know, time values are in increasing order. But if you have two uh, uh, records of the same ID, um, then you have already, you, you need to be sure you have um, sorted your input data set accordingly, and then you can use this reset function. Because then, whenever you have a one in your reset column, it knows, okay, at this point in time, I can, you know, uh, go back to start, back to zero. Okay, excellent. So we ran out of time today to answer any more questions, but we have really great questions, and we will assure to create a document with the responses to all your questions. If you uh, have a question you haven't asked, please type it now in the Q&A on in the chat before we adjourn. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Bern, for this excellent presentation. All right, thanks.